because you about to be an ATL. Y'all go ahead and like this video, please. And thank you. And we're going to go on over to the Real Housewives of Atlanta because clearly that is where we left off. Now, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta season 15, episode one, uh, was pretty much all about Sheree with Whitfield. And um, as I was saying, you know, they want to give Sheree her flowers, and they didn't, you know, listen, they did, we did made fun of Sheree, we made fun of the Chateau, we laughed at her being broke, when she got divorced, and she was squatting in Bob's house, and couldn't pay, and she got kicked out, she had to live in that apartment, we was laughing at her then, and then when she said Bob wasn't taking care of the kids, but then we found out he was, we was laughing at her, it was like one thing after the next, but you know, it is what it is, one thing I can say about Sheree Whitfield is that she perseveres, she comes back each and every time. She gets knocked down and act like didn't nobody hit her. I like people like that, honey. I like, you know, it is what it is. Me and Sheree may not see eye to eye, but I can give her her props when it comes to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Is she going to allow them to embarrass her by any means necessary? She's like, cut the check and I will be there. Okay. Now, it was about Sheree. Actually, each episode, if you are a Real Housewives fan, you will know that most episodes, when they title the episodes, and uh, they title the episodes based off of the lady's storyline. This particular episode was Who Gonna Check My New Boo? So if you tell me this ain't about a ch charade, I don't. I think you're blind, okay? I think you're blind. So the episode was titled Who Gonna Check My New Boo? And everybody was checking Sheree's new boo. And you know who Sheree's new boo is? Martell Hope from Love and Marriage Huntsville. Now, their connection is, was made in PR history. <laughs> we talked about this over and over again, how Sheree and Carlos, you know, they're kindred spirits, okay? You know, Carlos allegedly, you know, stole a show from Sheree and had to make it up to her. And so he put her as executive producer, even though she didn't get paid for it. And then she had to do him a favor when she got fired. Like, they've been playing like you scratch my back i'll scratch yours for a while now okay and so apparently carlo must must need some help with this damn uh love and marriage Huntsville. now i don't watch it a lot of y'all watch it but not enough okay they don't get millions of episode i don't think they've ever got millions an episode but you know they may be doing pretty well for own numbers i don't know but then if you see carlos king also he he does other things that you know can give him the side I like you know he's constantly talking about Bravo shows even though he's no longer on Bravo and it's like what is going on like are you, you like trying to sabotage these storylines I don't know because it's clear a lot of these ladies owe you know Carlos you know what I'm saying so you know I'm not gonna even get into that but y'all already know we talk about that on Patreon all the time uh you said Sheree and Martell sounds like something that should be on 90 day fiance but one thing about Sheree, she should have been on 90 Day Fiance with Tyrone, okay? <laughs> not 90 Day Love at the Locker with Tyrone. Tyrone clearly, I don't know what the deal was with Tyrone. I don't know why she hung with Tyrone. Tyrone was just getting out of jail. She already knew that wasn't going to work. It didn't work, and she moved on. She tried to reconnect with Bob that time. She knew that wasn't going to work, and she went on. Now here she is. Remember, remember the doctor, Dr. Tyree back in the day? He found out he was a fake doctor. She tried that for a hot second, and she moved on. One thing Sheree is going to do is have her a man that ain't about shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. It is what it is. So now she got Martel Ho. Martel Ho is best known for his uh for being married on Love and Marriage Huntsville, for being, you know, the top couple on the show, and also for cheating on his wife with another uh, with a younger lady and getting the, the the lady pregnant while his wife was pregnant. So all of this was going on on social media, and you know, we all saw it, you know, because that was listen that storyline about the baby mama and the, what's her name Ariane and her calling and doing all the stuff she did like all of that was a lot more interesting than what was actually playing out on the screen so now we got Sheree with this man who has is a known cheater which you know he might be different with her I don't know people say people change I don't know I think you know I always say a snake don't don't share their skin they just become bigger snakes they just know how to hide it better and so you know the it seems like uh the Real Housewives of Atlanta producers are kind of 
capitalize it off of that. They know that he's scandalous and they know that, you know, Sheree might need a little scandal this season, you know, because that's what sells. Scandal sells regardless. So Sheree and Martell, you know, pop jump off the whole season uh, with their relationship. We see Martell come over from uh, from a photo shoot or whatever. We, you know, Sheree explains they met through a mutual friend. You know, my people say their mutual friend was they once shared a PR person. <laughs> that's their mutual friend. So if that like if that's not a PR relationship, I don't know what is. Okay. But this whole situation of you know Sheree and Martell, and you know, I don't see the chemistry. They might be bumping skins or whatever. I just don't. I, you know, how old is Martell? Is Martell younger than Sheree? Is he like 10, 15 years younger than Sheree? I don't know. Sheree got grown ass kids. She in that big ass house by herself. One thing that uh she need Martell for is to help fix shit. <laughs> so I mean she might need her for that, but I don't think Martell need her. I think Martell still want to be with his wife because he messed up and he knew he didn't want to be with the side chick. He still wanted his wife, but he's there. He said not 10 or 15 years, it's just 10. Okay, Martell is 41 and Sheree is 53. Okay, well, that's 10 years. Okay, it is what it is. Um, but whatever the case may be, you know, I guess they're having fun together. You can't knock that. That's a good thing. Uh, as for um this whole season, let me take let me let me read you some of what I wrote, which is interesting to me. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all like this video as y'all come in here because I'm about to um I gotta I gotta go into my my uh my notes for a second because I don't want to miss nothing when it comes to this situation, okay? Now, uh, Martell and Sheree, you know, uh, Sheree has a surprise for him. She has a lady there who is fixing um, a, a nice lunch. I guess it's a lunch for the two of them. And I also noticed that Sheree in this episode is wearing a lot of She by Sheree outfits, a lot of workout gear. And I don't know if it's being sold or not, but we ain't never seen none of this workout gear on the streets. Her dang uh, website was down when she tried to lunch it. Where is these fashions at? And why is she the only person with them? That was my question. But anyway, I'm digress. Now, um, another thing that Martel mentioned that was interesting, because he saw the lady in the kitchen and he was like, oh, I thought we was about to have a threesome or something. You know, he thought he was it was, it was something else about to go, go down. And I'm like, well, what the heck? Like, it's like. I don't understand. That don't seem like a, a genuine type of relationship to me. That seemed like it's just fun. It's just fun. Let's kick it. Let's, you know, get, get this this Atlanta. Whatever happens, happens. That's what it's given. But it is what it is. And Sheree also noted that she had tried to have a threesome with her ex-husband, but he decided to have a threesome with somebody else. And it's like, why do we care? <laughs> why do we care what Bob, had, what, what's going on with Bob's threesome, Sonny? Anyway. Now moving on, um, I talked about the 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 uh she by Sheree athletic girl, okay. But um, it fast forwards to Candy and her clique. We got done one, we got Carmen, you know, chilling at the candy coated offices, okay. And all they talking about is Sheree. Like I told you, this episode is all about Sheree. That's why in the uh, peach holding scene, but in the peach holding scene, Sheree and Candy are in the middle. Why is that? Because I feel, and you could quote me five episodes from now and let me know how you feel, but I feel it's all, it's going to be all about Sheree and this jacked up PR relationship, and it's going to be all about Candy and her lack of uh, parenting and not spending time with her husband. That's what we got for this season. Do we care about all this? Absolutely not, but we're going to watch it anyway. Now, um, you know, Dumb One Shades, uh, Sheree's... Uh, website okay it is what it is but candy also talks about how you know that sheree is in a pr relationship and she seems to be a lot too in, a little too involved in you know sheree's relationship it's giving me portia and dennis all over again y'all remember when um when Candy kept trying to tell Portia Dennis, you know, used to mess with her friend or Dennis had a tattoo of, of somebody on him and this and the third. Like, why do you care? Why? I know it's a reality show, but it's just giving real petty and stuff. Why we can't just go eat and chill and have cocktails and, you know, fight over the bill? Why we always got to fight over relationships? Yeah, she is so messy. So, you know, she talks about Martell. 
and how she knows that Martell is uh she heard that he was seeing somebody else in Atlanta and stuff. It's just interesting. Um, she also is joined by Kenya and Monetta Shaw. Monetta Shaw is another friend this season. And Monetta, I think she's gonna, you know, ramp up the messy, okay? Because, you know, she's in the room when Candy's saying she heard that, you know, that Martell was seeing somebody else in Atlanta. So, of course, later on, she gonna spread that tea. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. You said Candy always in everybody else's business. But if somebody talk about Todd, she is ready to fight. But wait a minute. What about when they were sitting in the damn candy coated uh offices with um Kenya and Candy let out the goat goat voice because it frustrates me. I understand that I'm doing a lot and I understand that that can be frustrating for him. Uh, I don't understand. Me and Todd are having issues. He say that he, that I don't care about his 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 play. But don't do things to make me the problem. Yeah. And I do, and he want to do it with me, and we don't have time. And it's like, girl, we already know this. Is, oh, it's so contrived. I was just like, oh, where is the remote control? I'm over it already. You said Candy knows that Ty has mistresses. Candy's office needs a fresh coat of paint. I did like them boots and pants that Kenya was wearing. Okay, but did you like uh, Candy's Gucci outfit? Because the people say that that was uh, why Tamar was shading the Atlanta people wearing fake Gucci. They said she was talking about Candy. Now, y'all know Candy is frugal, and I don't see Candy spending $1,500 on a Gucci dress. I don't, but she might have. But, you know, they sell that same dress over at the flea market. That's what they say. That's what um, Tamar has said. But I'm digressing. <laughs> I'm digressing, okay? You said Gucci don't make it? <laughs> well, I know they made a blue one. I don't know if they make a green one. Mm. Let me sip my tea. I know they make a blue one. Y'all Google, Google Gucci and let me know. I don't know. Um, You said, I look at love and marriage Huntsville every episode. Martel still loves his wife, but she do not want him. She's the highest paid person. P.S. It's time to get rid of Candy. I believe this is her last season. Okay, there's that. Ooh, child. Not the Confederate KFC flag. Okay, listen. And they did run the commercial of Candy bucking and jiving with the, K the KFC at Ace. I understand y'all like chicken. We like chicken. We all like chicken. But uh, the Confederate colonel <laughs> selling this chicken just kind of rubs me the wrong way. When the last time y'all had Kentucky Fried Chicken? i wait. You said, I can afford Gucci. Them others buy Gucci, okay? I'm just saying, it was a cute dress now. It was a cute, but I'm just saying, I heard that that, that was uh, why uh, Tamar was shading the girls in Atlanta, because remember, Tamar and Candy been low-key beefing. Y'all remember Candy said that Todd approached her and all that, and then Candy, I mean, Tamar said that Todd approached her, and then Candy was saying that it didn't happen, and yada, yada, yada. So they've been low-key beefing, and so uh, Tamar had posted on her thing, and she said, you know, I didn't know all the people in Atlanta be wearing the fake Gucci. Now, all of a sudden, every time you see Candy, she got on the Gucci. <laughs> Courtney should have way chicken and candy face and that would have been it okay you said i can afford gucci too but ain't nothing wrong with the knockoffs okay kim i didn't see the confederate flag in the commercial run it back i didn't i saw i'm talking about the confederate colonel i'm not talking about the flag the the colonel was a confederate colonel anyway we didn't even talk about that shouldn't she run a commercial for her own restaurant apparently kfc and bravo are uh partners they're in cahoots they're on the same board of directors and all kind of stuff the members is cross promotion so you will see kentucky fried chicken and a lot of their things okay which you know i guess candy got to do what the boss tell her to do okay moving on let me move on to something else child. i'm tired of talking about candy and the candy coated click um oh this is another thing that happened now y'all remember when marlo the other day about a week or so ago did an interview where she said that candy is too busy chasing the bag to be a parent y'all remember that and everybody thought that marlo was being shady well apparently the producers are being shady too because when candy was crying talking about you know uh her and Todd was having issues and that, you know, even Ace be mad at her and say she don't, she worked too much, you know, for being six years old. The producers played that clip of her with that Afro wig on 
and Candy had got a call from Ace crying on the phone. And Ace was like, Mommy, I need you. I need your help with the homework. And she was like, well, can't the nanny, I don't know who the nanny name was because I can't remember. But she was like, can't the nanny help you? And he was like, no, mom, I want you. I want you. And she was like, I'm at work, whatever, whatever. So, I mean, the producers were being shady with that. So I'm feeling like, you know, they already setting Candy up for failure. Now, Candy already said that Todd is mad. And, you know, the Todd wants her to help more. That You know, she got her own goals and aspirations. She ain't got time to help Todd with his. She got, you know, things to do. She ain't got time to help Ace with his homework. And so now we see it all come into fruition right in front of us. So Marlo was telling the truth and you know it is what it is we might not like marlo but at least she's keeping it real now um sonya richards ross she uh was playing a huge party let me go ahead and talk about her i already talked about sheree i will talk a little bit about candy sonya is playing a huge party for ross's birthday okay she has something to prove to the ladies of course because you know the last time she threw a party it was no, it was nothing. They didn't have no decorations. It was just in her kitchen. They didn't have no good food. It was in a pan. They didn't have no, no, no dishes, no petri dish. They didn't have nothing. The, the food wasn't warm. Nothing. They just had some cold ass food. So now she said she she got a budget, honey, of forty thousand dollars for Ross's fortieth birthday party. But apparently, it has the budget has increased to a hundred thousand because she wants to, you know, keep up with the Joneses for whatever reason. Now, now, now. Sonya, you're going to end up broke. Now, don't do it. Now, we just seen a lot of these ladies. Look at Kim Zosiak. Now, she's losing her house and her husband. We don't need you losing your house and your husband. You ain't been on this show but two seasons. We know you're not making that much money, Sonya. Now, don't be spending this kind of money on no party and then you paying for it 10 years later. It don't make sense to me now. I understand wanted to keep it, you know, nice and everything, but $100,000 for a party, that's a too much, okay? But anyway, that's been stressing her out. Yes, Ross is fine now. Ross is fine. He, he seemed like he's a good man. He's quiet and stuff. I don't know, but them quiet ones, you have to watch, honey. But anyway, uh, but she got a lot of stuff going on in her house. Now, I think Ross might have a lot of free time, too, because son, you got her mama living there, her daddy living there, her sister living there, her sister husband living there, her sister kids living there, they kids living there, and Ross. It's a lot of people in that house. Okay, you said a hundred thousand for a party is ridiculous. Okay, you better get you some burgers and fries and throw them on the grill and have some in the bag. <laughs> Anywho, it was just interesting that you know all the people live with her, and the sister even got a, a confessional. Did y'all notice the sister had got all dressed up and made up and got a confessional too? So the sister trying to to uh, be a friend of the show. So now the sister has said that she um is pissed off because Sonya don't know no boundaries. Son, Sonya think everybody work for her. And, you know, now she done hired the, the sister husband to be her assistant and got him running all around and she won't even let him stop and eat the food and, and have time for his kids and his family. And then she said back in the day when Sonya was, was an Olympic gold medal medalist, the mom and the dad was the manager and she used to do the hair and, and Sonya used to come home late at night want her to cut the hair. And it's like, listen, y'all living there. What y'all living there for? You living there to support her. You living there to support this dream. You living there because she the superstar and y'all are her team. So you need to shut up and just do the hell. <laughs> That's how I see it. Like, are y'all paying rent? Are y'all paying mortgage? Are, are you just living there? Now, if you live there with your whole family and kids, you might as well chip in for the primary uh breadwinner. I'm just saying. You said, uh, did you hear Cruz hate on Sonya party saying her parties is better? Yeah, I heard Candy say her parties was better. Uh, I know Sonya mama look good. Sonya mama do look good. I'm just saying, it's a lot of people living in that house. They need to go on chip in. And if chipping in means being my assistant, if chipping in means doing my hair for these things, if chipping in means cooking dinner tonight, that's what chipping is. is. You need to earn your keep. Exactly. Thank you so much. You see, I, I knew I wasn't wrong about Sonya. Scooch on for Sonya. Sonya and Sheree, they had a workout date. Blah, 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 blah. That's when Courtney is introduced. Courtney is Sheree's friend. We don't know where she came from. I ain't did my research on her. Y'all let me know. Maybe I'll do some research on her later. I don't know the lady. But um, she, she's Sheree's friend. She come in while they supposed to be working out. She got on thigh high boots or whatever. So clearly she did not come to work out. She came to be seen by the cameras. And while she was there, of course, son, you're going to invite her to the birthday party. But Courtney also spilled some tea while they was, you know, working out or 
finished working out and pretty much says, you know, that she had heard that Candy had been calling around asking about her and saying and lied on her and said that Courtney said that she and Candy was friends. That's what Courtney said, that Candy had lied and she didn't like that Candy had lied. So I don't really know that that's a big deal or if we even care. So, of course, we already know that Candy is uh, the head peach holder. She feel like she's the longest running peach. If she knows that somebody is coming on the show that's supposed to be a friend, I can see Candy calling around trying to find out about her. It is what it is. Uh, now, fast forward to uh, Ross's party. OK, now, uh, Courtney wants to confront Candy for, you know, uh, asking about her which is weird you know i, I get it you want to you want to be seen you want to be in the scene you're trying to get your keep and so that's your your key to being in the scene is asking the longest running peach holder why was you calling asking about little old me okay she did seem messy now she did and but candy also seemed to take it a little too far like you being real violent, Candy Cur Candy Burris. <laughs> I can't do it. Candy Burris, you being real violent now. You know, y'all always try to like flip the script and say, like, Nene almost tried to attempt to spit on Kenya. Nene snatched this person's shirt and blah, blah, blah. Now you talk about headbutting people. You talk about swinging. You in a party. You in an elegant party, all dressed up. You cursing and screaming, calling people bitches and stuff. It was ghetto, okay? But, you know, apparently that's that's who she gonna be this season because, you know, the producers, uh, the executives got her wearing Afro wigs and stuff and that's how they see y'all. You know, they got her eating fried chicken on the commercial. So we're going to see Candy, who is this uh, this business woman who is held in high esteem, who is winning all its awards. We're going to see her see her get low down and gutter this season. Um, what else do we have? Oh, OK. So uh, uh, also, Sheree makes her first public appearance at this party, at Ross's party, with Martell on her arm. And for some reason, everybody was in their feelings about it. And I didn't understand that either because just last season at the reunion, Sheree had Martell on um, FaceTime and they was passing the phone around and everybody just loved Martell. Martell, Martell, Martell. You talking to Martell? Let me see Martell. And even Kenya was like, hey, Martell, all of this stuff. So now all of a sudden, Kenya in the middle of it want to say that Martell was in her DMs and we can't even find a DM that he sent her. And that's interesting too, because, you know, of course, Kenya, gonna, you know, Kenya got no other storyline. Where is Mark? We don't know. We ain't seen Mark since he left. He, he gone, child. Uh, she's being a single parent. What can what Kenya got going on? We don't know. So apparently Kenya is the uh, relationship monitor. Okay. She is monitoring Sheree's relationship and she feels a ways because she feels like Martell is no good. But we already knew that last season. So why you here now that he's here in the cameras? Now you want to curse him out and, and act crazy. But it is what it is. Uh, that's all I get. Let me see what else I get. Oh, Ralph and Drew. Of course, you know, Drew wasn't there. You know, people have been saying she she hadn't uh, sealed a deal on her contract yet. And I guess, you know, Ralph was being her placeholder, you know, just in case. I mean, he had to go. He say Ross is a friend of his, so he had to go to the party. It wouldn't look right if he didn't go. But it's weird. Like, I felt like they could have came up with another excuse like Ralph, I mean, not Ralph, uh, Ralph telling everybody that Drew had a family crisis, a family emergency. It's like, just like Kenya said, aren't y'all in the same family? Like in her family, your family, wouldn't the crisis uh, also affect you? Like, how are you here saying that your wife had a family crisis? So it was a little weird. You said Drew's father has cancer. Okay, I understand that. But Ralph shouldn't have been at the party either. Then Ralph should have been uh, next with his wife's side. But we already know it's some issues with Ralph and Drew's marriage allegedly, but I, you know, I'm side out in that as well. Uh, towards the end of the party, that's when you know all hell breaks loose. We got Monietta telling Sheree about you know knowing that Martell is seeing uh other women around Atlanta. You got Kenya telling Sheree that Martell sent her DMs, and you got Sheree telling Martell to come over and you know clear this all out and you got Sheree in her confessional telling everybody that she's a Ferrari and anybody else he talks to is a Toyota whatever the case may be uh all of that like yelling and screaming and Kenya cursing him out and telling him he ain't shit and all this it's just a bit much okay but 
it is what it is. Uh, the rest of it is to be continued for the next episode. So I guess y'all have to tune in and see what happens. And I feel like they included all of this in episode one just to make y'all tune in. And the rest of the scene is going to be lame. Anyway, uh, you said, I'm going to call Andy on his Sirius XM show Wednesday and ask him why Candy gets all these privileges when most watchers don't like her. Ooh, 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 ooh. Because Candy does what they tell her to do. That's why she gets the privilege. Candy does what they tell her to do. Um, the next scene episode seems like another fake TV moment where Kenya yells at her friend's man, much like when she came for Peter that one time. Okay, she came for Peter that one time. Remember, um, remember her in the middle of Apollo and uh Phaedra? Remember her trying to have a threesome with Apollo and Phaedra? It's giving me real jealous, like because you know, throughout everything, even in her confessional, uh Kenya didn't say that she wouldn't date Martell. She just said that Martell gets people pregnant. And then she had the nerve to shade Sheree and say Sheree ain't got periods. But girl, you ain't got no periods either. Ain't y'all the same age? <laughs> like, how she gonna talk about Sheree being menopausal and her ass is menopausal? I just don't get it, honey. Anyway, there's that. Honey. Listen, don't even get me started about, you know, she didn't use her own egg and yada, yada, yada. Like, people be like, be mad when people go in the gutter on Kenya, but Kenya goes in the gutter on everybody, and I don't like that, okay? Uh, You said she came from Ralph, too? Yup, okay, and yet again, what you say? And yet again, Nene can't get on the breath club. How you know what Nene can do? I remember that. I was disgusted when she did that. Right, right. <sighs> Moving on. Yeah.